Hi, I'm Elizabeth Blendon, and I want to be speaking about the DAPA and the DACA Supreme Court litigation that is going on today. Um, DAPA is Deferred Action for Parents of Americans and Lawful Permanent Residents, and I think what I can add to the conversation is truly the experience of some of the clients that I've helped. Um, I have some clients who I've already helped, thankfully, due to the original DACA, not the expanded DACA, which is uh, before the Supreme Court right now. And one of those stories that's uh, you know, very moving is the one of a young man uh, from Canada who was here in the United States and, um, and he was injured when he was young. He came in when he was very young and he was injured. And the injuries were so great that it led, once he, he became better, it was a, a car on bicycle, a uh, car accident. And once he became better, he decided it would be his life's dream to pursue nursing. But of course, he couldn't pursue nursing unless he could get into education after high school. And with DACA, he was able to get a work permit and also go on and get the financial aid he needed and ro enroll in nursing school. So I've seen some pretty uh, great people go on and help the community after DACA. And I believe the same thing will happen uh, to people who get DAPA. It's important to understand that DAPA is deferred action. What that basically means is that the, uh, the government has decided not to deport someone. There are many people that the government cannot, should not, and has no desire to uh, deport. Unfortunately, because there's no guidance from the executives, from um, you know, the president on down, there's really no guidance as to who they can choose. Sometimes they need to deport people who should not be deported. One case that I remember very well is the case of a single mother from Jamaica. Her son, her U.S. citizen son, was a paraplegic from the neck down, and she was being deported. Uh, this is something that was incredible to me. Unfortunately, her case landed in the hands of the worst immigration judge in the United States. So there was a 97% chance that she would be deported and nothing that anyone could do to stop it. What we finally did was I was able to negotiate with the attorneys uh, for ICE and I, you know, I, I have no other way of saying it other than I simply s said to them, look, this is going to come out in the press that you are trying to deport the single mother of a U.S. citizen who's paraplegic from the neck down. That was the only way to get it going up the chain of command because they knew that it would uh, embarrass the entire Department of Homeland Security. Only at that point were they able to offer uh, this mother deferred action so she could care for her child who at that time needed to be turned every four hours. The beauty of DAPA is that it, we don't have to get to the, that extreme. We don't have to wait until the, you know, our government spends money on attorneys and judges and prosecutors and making photocopies. We don't have to waste all that money. We just have to understand and appreciate that uh, parents of U.S. citizen and legal permanent children should stay here, especially if they've been here already for over six years, which is one of the requirements. They have no criminal record. Or they've been here over six years, and they're the parents of U.S. citizens or residents. So we're keeping the families together, uh, and it's also good for the security of the country because they'll have an ID with their picture on it and their fingerprints. Um, and it's, so it's good for the security, good for the economy, and obviously good for keeping families together. Obviously, I'm a, 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 a someone who believes that also leg for legal reasons, uh, the Supreme Court should decide in favor of the administration. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm more than happy to take any questions about it whether about the legal issues or the uh, human issues. Right, so there are several outcomes that could happen. The easiest thing for the Supreme Court to do would be to say that the states that have um, filed a lawsuit have no standing and cannot bring this lawsuit. If that happens, that would be the same as a victory, because in that case, if they can't bring the lawsuit, then uh, the Department of Homeland Security can proceed to uh, go forward with expanded DACA and DAPA and start accepting applications very soon for DAPA, as well as they already have the applications for expanded DACA, so they would release those quickly. Uh, that would be one uh, good outcome if they decide that these states have no standing. Another uh, good outcome would be if they simply follow what uh, the justices have said in previous decisions. 
uh, in a, the 2012 case of Arizona versus the United States, when they came out with the decision, Justice Kennedy, who now is likely to be one of the people to go 5-3 if he goes with what he said in 2012, very clearly said that the president has a great deal of discretion uh, to decide how to use the limited resources that our country has. Um, and one point that, that very few people know is that if we right now were to somehow magically close the borders, all water borders, all land borders, north and south, it would take us, at the current rate that we deport people, it would take us 70, 70 years to deport everyone who's in the United States. So we really have limited resources. It's just a, a fantasy to imagine that we could somehow deport everyone who's here without authorization. Um, it's, it's the executive's decision, as Justice Kennedy himself said in 2012. I'm hoping that the second uh, thing that can happen is that they decide 5-3. Of course, if they did... If they change, if something has changed between 2012 and 2016, and now Justice Kennedy feels that the president doesn't have as much power as he originally believed, then it might be 4-4 and it might go against us. But even there, I am the eternal optimist, and even there, I believe that the fight does not end. Because if it goes back, then guess what? There are 24 other states that can bring a lawsuit and say that um, this injunction on the president's action is harming their economy. And not only are there 24 states, but there are many cities that can also say that. And that's why the Mayor's Association has said that this is good, that DAPA and DACA are good for their economy. So the way I'm trying to be very optimistic that any way that it happens, eventually at the end of the day, it's going to be good for us. So if there isn't a favorable ruling, uh, initially what would happen is that there are millions and millions of parents who have no way of knowing whether today or tomorrow they will be separated from their U.S. citizen and legal permanent ch resident children. Um, they would continue their lives in the shadows hoping that when they take their children to school um, a, an immigration officer isn't nearby and someone might not stop them or knock on their door, you know, and that fear would return. Um, very importantly, with the current climate that exists, the current political climate that exists, calling certain foreigners by horrible names, there is a deep psychological impact that is occurring to, you, to an entire generation of children, of U.S. citizen children, who are the children of foreign nationals who are here with undocumented status. All those children are living in fear that they will be separated, in some cases from their single mothers, the only breadwinner in their home. And, um, and I believe I read a study that says that there are currently 5,000 U.S. citizen children in foster care because their single parent was, were deported. So um, that would be the worst outcome, and I really hope that the justices take that into consideration, which I'm sure there's no way they can avoid taking that into consideration. Well, so if now, um, that's, that's a tough question always. I, I, I always take a, a breath when I think about, you know, is this gonna, how is this going to impact the Hispanic community? Um, whenever there is a, a case that comes down, and says that specifically foreign nationals can be deported on a whim and there's no protection for them even though they've been here for over six years, there is bound to be um, a, a, an immediate, um, I want to say visceral reaction. There's nothing to feel in that moment but fear because there is no law stopping persons from deporting those who are undocumented and those who are documented, those who are citizens, those who are residents, um, even, though, even though they have the fear that they might be profiled as undocumented, another fear that they would also have is that they probably know someone who's a friend or a family member who is undocumented. Um, you know, my own children, when they flew to Arizona, believe it or not, I asked them, to take their passport card to demonstrate that they were U.S. citizens. One time I flew in from Germany and I teach my children to speak in Spanish. You know, when I got off the plane from Germany and I started speaking to my children in Spanish, immediately I had two immigration officers, one on each side. Uh, I'm not saying that's racial profiling, I'm just saying it's very curious. 
so uh, yes, I think that there's going to be a great deal of fear for the Hispanic community uh, if this doesn't go the way we hope well, it does. Well, I think one of the things, um, again, and, and I speak uh, as someone who's very proud to be a member of the Democratic Party, one of the things that I think is a, is a Democratic value is the fact that, you know, we stand not only for our own good and for our own safety, but it's that idea that we don't want others to be harmed because we don't know if we're next. You know, it's not only that, you know, we're, we're protecting our own, we're also protecting others because first they came for them and now they come for me and no one cares that now they come for me. So um, that's why I think this is a, a much larger issue than just the Hispanics. Because when, you know, it's not just, uh, I mean, obviously there are many Hispanics in the United States who will benefit from this, but at its core, this is not only for Hispanics. This is permitting people who already are friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, those who make our lives the way we know our lives to be, just allowing them to have an ID and giving their children some form of mental certainty, some form of certainty to know mom and dad will be here tomorrow. They will be here tomorrow. They will be able to put, legally f put food on the table. You don't have to be afraid of that. And I think that when you know, we put our children to sleep at night, I think w it's a beautiful thing not to have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about necessarily, will I be here tomorrow? Um, you know, and I think that that's, that's why I think it's more a human tragedy if this doesn't pass than just a Hispanic tragedy.